subject, better nutrition leads to better brain power, leads to better LSAT, question mark. Hi guys. To preface the opening banter on fasting in episode 275 led me to this idea. Oh, so it was two weeks ago that we were talking about fasting. Hmm. I'm not sure if this qualifies for pearls versus turds, but I think that healthy, I think that health slash lifestyle choices could be a topic for the podcast. If each demon user is truly chasing the highest LSAT score they are capable of, then they should want to max out their brain power, right? Though the reality is that each one of us is likely guilty of some behavior that is limiting our cognitive potential. That's it, incomplete sentence. I came to this conclusion at the start of my admissions journey and am now realizing that it's a neglected aspect of LSAT prep. For the sake of conversation content, I'll use my own experience as an example. Back in late August, I started making healthier decisions by quitting drinking, moving to keto, intermittent fasting, started at 18.6, now at 24, locked in a sleep pattern, nine to five each night, and locked in regular exercise. None of this happened instantly, aside from giving up the booze. It's an ongoing process. For instance, I haven't yet, but would like to introduce meditation into my daily routine. I'm not saying that people should make the lifestyle overhaul that I made. This just happens to be what has worked for me. I think the overall conclusion is that it would likely benefit each person studying for the LSAT to step back, scrutinize their daily schedule, and ask if they're doing all they can to max their potential. Fun fact, chess grandmasters burn up to 6,000 calories on a tournament day. Hmm. Praise the demon, preachy McPreach face. Um, I, I agree with this with some reservations. Um, it, it sounds like Preachy has done a lot of the things that I've done and like to mess around with some, a couple random thoughts. Um, one, I think that a lot of healthy decisions regarding sleep, regarding eating, regarding exercise, all those things combined together can have a, a huge impact. Um, it's kind of like in the game sections, you know, sometimes people get better, but they don't see a huge change in their score. But once everything starts to come together, then all of a sudden you're finishing that game, you're finishing the next game, and then bam, your score like goes up. So sometimes people will like focus on one of these things, like maybe they'll They'll focus on intermittent fasting, but they're still going to bed like really late. And, and so you're not really seeing the benefit because your, your like health is still kind of fucked up. I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to get any benefit, but it's more like sometimes these things all come together and then it's just like, wow, you're like firing at a hundred percent. Right. So I do agree with this idea. Um, at the same time, and this is just coming from my own experience, Sometimes I've taken these things to an extreme. So for example, with intermittent fasting, I was doing six, uh, eight, 16, and then I went up to like 24 and I was just eating one meal a day, kind of like what preachy sounds like he's doing. And then I realized like, there are consequences too, to going too far. Like, I think I kind of fucked myself up in that way. And so I think you have to, you have to like find something that's good and then work towards that, but not necessarily take it to an extreme because the extreme itself can have negative health consequences. Um, and mental and health consequences are part of that, right? Part of that, like, yeah. For example, mm -hmm. if you're going to go on a 20 hours fast, four hours eating, and you're going to do that every single day, you're going to be missing some social opportunities with mm -hmm. friends and family and stuff, right? Or you're gonna yeah. be that guy who never stops talking about intermittent fasting and can't just sit down and have a piece of damn pizza with you know your friends. And sure, maybe you are doing something good for your body, but you could be doing something bad for your whole mental outlook. So just extremism generally is bad, right? Yeah, I mean, when people say, you know, moderation in all things, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times I hear that as like an excuse just to be like right. <laughs> lazy, like, like, oh, I'm moderate. So I'm fine. Like, yeah, well, no, like there is value in like being disciplined, but you want to be smart. You want to be, 
um, like you want to think about what really you're after. You're after your health and is the optimal health achieved by taking intermittent fasting to its extreme? Um, anyways, one other thought here, I know this is kind of a tangent, but I really got into keto for like a month and a half and I achieved high levels of ketosis. Um, and I read three or four books on the topic and I was totally into it. And then I just to play devil's advocate, I read the book called Mastering Diabetes. And that one was one, a response to keto and highly, highly researched based in a way that the keto books were not. They were based on studies, but selective studies. You have to listen to the other side. And by the time I was done with that book, Mastering Diabetes, I don't have diabetes, but it doesn't matter. It was a response to keto the keto yep. diet. And I was convinced that keto is not the way to go long-term, that it has huge benefits. The book totally acknowledges the benefits that keto has, but it, it seems to be largely for people who are already immensely overweight. So like some of these benefits that people may be reporting are actually, you know, it's like, yeah, you're better than what you were, but not as good as you could be. And it kind of makes sense. The keto diet is well. rich. <laughs> many diets it turns out to be all you're really doing is restricting calories right including intermittent fasting that mm -hmm. a big part of the value of intermittent fasting why does it work for weight loss well because there's so much time during the day that you're not just mindlessly consuming calories it's yeah. harder to consume too many calories when you limit the amount of time that you eat each day and so sure and there you know there's the whole um parthenogenesis or whatever there's like many other things about fasting that are good for you but the maybe the maybe the number one main thing is oh well you're just going to kind of like not be eating so much yeah. <laughs> and, and i'm sure that's what happens on keto it's like oh here's these whole 90 percent of all foods that i'm not allowed to eat okay well then you're probably gonna not it's not going to be nearly as easy for you to overeat when there's so many things you can't eat before we move on um the last thing i want to say about this email is <clears throat> notice the you know preachy mcpreach face made dramatic changes to his life mm -hmm. the first one was cutting out the booze yeah that's the one that he was able to do instantly and after doing that, he was able to make several other changes successfully in his life. Yeah. And I have heard from a million LSAT students over the years that one of the things they did when they decided that they were going to get serious about their law school ambitions was they stopped drinking um, up front. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it has to be like absolute, but drinking does lead to all sorts of other bad decisions yeah. health wise it leads to bad food choices it leads to less exercise it leads to terrible sleep problems it's you know you're not and i i joke about it you know like i see students all the time in the classes who have a glass of wine and they're and they're like doing my lsat class mm -hmm. which i don't I, I i'm i am the last person to preach about this but uh, for some of you out there, you know who you are. Um, maybe give up the booze for a couple of weeks and see how you feel, because I have a feeling that it might be holding you back in, uh, in many ways. <laughs> some that you're conscious of and some that you're not conscious of. <clears throat> Anything else on that one? Yeah. The only thing I was going to tell McPreachy is to read that book, Mastering Diabetes, because as a keto fanatic myself for at least a little while i was convinced by that book that there's other better ways to achieve the same thing in combination with intermittent fasting cool. also that reminded me i had a question for you do you know the people who do the home podcast i felt like you told me that a long time ago you did yes <laughs> I, I well i'm not sure if they're doing home anymore but yeah you're talking about laura Yes. Yeah, yeah. Laura is a, uh, was a re I went to business school with Laura. She's a really good friend of mine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Have you been listening to home? No, no. Oh. Um, but uh, 
it's <laughs> you brought it up like the whole like quitting alcohol and that's a big podcast in that world and i'm trying yeah. to find this other book if anyone's interested um, no, she's a sure friend if you of, listen to that podcast you'll you'll get motivated to do that she's anyway. a friend of producer adams as well um, oh, okay she just wrote a book called we are the luckiest she was on the today yes. show she's on like yeah. the new york times bestseller list she's become so she's an old drinking buddy of mine who became like a star in the sobriety world. So it's yeah. Laura McCowan. The book is We Are the Luckiest. Um, she's teaching like sobriety classes and stuff now as well. So yeah, she went to Babson College with me, another Babson entrepreneur. So to pile on to the health book recommendations, here's another book that um, I can't recommend, but uh, people I know who would recommend this. It's the alcohol experiment, a 30 day alcohol free challenge to interrupt your habits and help you take control. Hugely successful for some people that's by Annie Grace. Um, and somehow I think she's connected to Laura or knows Laura or something. I think it's but a pretty anyways. small world. I imagine that they all yeah. know each other. Um, I can yeah. vouch for Laura as a writer. Uh, Laura was like my writing buddy and drinking buddy <laughs> in uh, business school. And uh, it's a, a beautiful book. She's a really great uh, writer and a good friend. So uh, that was, we are the luckiest. All right. Um, 